Can you tell me a little bit about the importance of real world evidence? And, you know, we hear about it in the media a lot, we talk about big data. Yeah. Um, where do you think this is going? Um, well, I think for me, it's, it's, it's the crucial move to enabling us to, to understand what's actually happening to patients in practice, um, as opposed to what, what happens to patients in, the, in a, a, a very experimentally designed um, randomized control trial. So, so let's take um, uh, the example of the outcomes-based reimbursement. So, it, so in principle, we don't necessarily need real-world real world evidence. We could say, let's have a, an experimental RCT conducted in, a, in another health system, and we, we're, we're worried about whether these effects last for the six months of the trial or actually last for at least two years. So let's run an, a, a trial somewhere else for two years and we'll use it within our health system and another health system will have an RCT for two years. Mm -hmm. And then we'll compare, we'll see whether or not um, the RCT is, you know, confirms that two years the effects have continued. Um, but I think what we're also interested in is not just the duration of those effects, we're also interested in do they work in patients who may not fit the criteria that, that were in the, the experimental RCT that was used um, um, primarily for registration purposes? So what about comorbidities? What about age groups that are outside um, the, the trial? So, so understanding what's happening in the system does require real-world evidence, whether that's a, a more pragmatic trial or, it, or it's collecting observational data within the system. So that's ultimately, I think, the question that payers want answered. Is this product going to deliver value in my health system with mm. the patients that turn up and I want to have treated by my, um, by, by my clinicians? So, so real-world evidence is, is the only way of answering the question that I think most matters um, to payers. And in a sense, m gives most reassurance ultimately to manufacturers that the R and D investment is actually delivering health gain to patients within the health system. People are better off as a result of of taking and using the product. So I think the it, it, so in that sense, for me, it is it is the future. Although we do have to recognise, certainly with observational data, there are methodological issues, and those have to be um, um, addressed. But I think the one of the other, I think, drivers which is impacting on RCT evidence as well as as, um, as pragmatic and observational studies is just the the cost of doing all these studies. And I, I, and, I, and I mentioned that you know one of the issues with, with outcomes based reimbursement for payers and and for com uh, for, for R and D based companies is just the cost of setting up the systems mm -hmm. to collect this. Okay. But if we were able to improve IT, improve our electronic health records, so have the potential for, for information-based learning healthcare systems, then those potentially would make RCTs as well as, um, as, as, well as observational studies so much um, easier and, and cheaper to, um, to put in place. Apart, if we take a, an RCT, apart from the original randomization, then if the study was pragmatic, you may be able you may be able to pick up all the subsequent information you need from the electronic health records, so where the patient is being followed in through routine treatment um, pathway, um, observational data likewise, rather than having to um, to set up particular points and in, and, in, and and of, of collecting data, then we're looking at routine um, routine medical records. Mm -hmm. So. So I think our ability to, to have an evidence base that enables the system to understand where value is being delivered and, and where it's not could be the cost of doing that could be, I think, transformed if we, if we actually had those IT systems and electronic health records that, that we, we desperately need, I think.